Where are those guys? Thomas, Thomas. Hey, yeah, you, yeah, you guys are a little late. Yeah, hey, we had stuff to do. Yeah, Dean Simmons wanted us to pick up a few things, and then we overslept. But hey, you made breakfast for us. Yeah, but it's probably a little cold now. That's okay, I'm starving. I'm gonna pray for us. Dear God, thank you for Mike and Steve and bringing them here. I pray that they would learn what it means to honor Jesus and honor those in charge of them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, tell me what's going on with the dean. I know he's in charge of the whole school and all, and you know, and that was pretty cool of him to make us his assistants. But honestly, I, I just wish he would just stop bossing us around all the no, time. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. You know, I mean, like, run this message to so-and-so, go get this, go get that. I mean, all these chores he's having us do are so... So boring. Yeah, totally boring. I mean, after all we've done, I, I think we deserve a break. Are you sure about that? Aren't, aren't you the two that damaged the science building and most of the science lab? But I'm just tired of Dean Sims telling us what to do all the time. No, no, I'm, I'm done. So done. Yeah, I'm done too. Wait, wait a second. This guy's in charge of the college. Do you realize that he didn't have to give you a second chance? I mean, he could have kicked you out of school. Well, maybe that would have been better. I don't really think you mean that. Maybe. Maybe not. I mean, his way doesn't seem to get us anywhere anyways. Maybe he shouldn't be the one in charge of the school. Well, come on, Mike. Let's go clean the attic. Let's get out of here. I'm so disappointed to see that Mike and Steve are still taking the Dean for granted. After all he's done for them. I mean, he could have kicked them out, but he didn't. He's given them another chance. You know, God gives us second chances too. Just like Abraham. Remember him? First, God chose Abraham and made him a big promise. For a while though, it seemed like God's promise was coming true. But then things got a little off track. Abraham's great-grandkids were in Egypt, not Canaan, like God had promised. Still, God always had a plan. He always keeps his promises and he never changes his mind. I wish I could say the same thing about God's people. I wish I could say the same thing about Mike and Steve. Do you think we'll ever be able to clean this up? I mean, the stuff coming out of the Bible isn't helping. Maybe we should quit reading it. Oh, no way! Don't you want to find out what happens next? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, okay, we left off with Joseph, remember? Yes. Everyone had moved from Canaan to Egypt. Which messed up God's promise to Abraham. Exactly. Well, let's find out if, you know, God was able to get them back on track. Good idea to me. All right. Oh! Hey, hey, take a look at Exodus, the next book of the Bible. Things just went from bad to worse. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, Abraham's family, God's people, are now called Israelites. And they've been in Egypt for a long time. But whoa, hey, lots has changed. For one thing, they had lots of kids, and their kids had kids, and their kids had kids. And anyway, there were a lot of Israelites living in Egypt. That doesn't sound so bad. Okay, let's see. Huh? Okay, mm -hmm. after about 400 years, the Pharaoh of Egypt decided he didn't want so many of them around. So he made the Israelites, God's chosen people, his slaves. Oh, that's awful. Wait, uh, what's a Pharaoh? Yeah, I'm wondering the same thing. Eh, let's see. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, a Pharaoh is the guy in charge of all Egypt. Hmm. Well, it's sort of like a king, in a way. Anyway, this pharaoh guy forced the Israelites to make bricks and build palaces and stuff in Egypt for like hundreds of years. No, oh, oh, hang on, wait for it. Oh, no, oh, what's oh, 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that was close. Oh, pretty bad. Yeah, it was about all right. All right. It says here the Israelites were so miserable, they begged God to help them get out of Egypt. Oh. Hey, look. God told this Moses guy to lead the Israelites out of Egypt 
and back to the land of Canaan. Pharaoh's not going to like that. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, wow. Hmm? God put plagues on Egypt so the Pharaoh would let the Israelites leave. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 I got the plague. Oh, uh, I got the plague. Would you uh, just uh, stop it? Come oh, on. Oh, hey. Okay, fine. I'll stop. Stop. stop I'll <laughs> Okay, so what kind of plagues were they, though? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's move on. Oh, come on. I want to know. Trust me. We're better off if we skip this part. I think I can remember some of the plagues. Weren't there, like, four? Hey, hey, I'm serious. Zip it. I mean, come on. Remember when I asked you to read about the creation and everything and yeah. all those animals came out? Yeah. Well, this will be ten times worse. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, 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 hey, I told oh, you oh, so. Oh, 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 put it back up. Oh, oh, oh. oh, <laughs> let's move on. All right, it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, good. It, it says after the plagues, the pharaoh finally said yes, that they could leave. Hmm. Hmm. Well, by then, the Egyptians wanted the Israelites to leave. But check this out. Mm. Before the Israelites finally hit the road, the Egyptians gave them all of their gold and jewels to send them on their way. Oh. 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 Money. Oh. Oh. Look at all this gold. Oh, look, Rich. Look, look, <laughs> look, look at all found. this gold. Look hey, found. give me one. Here, here. <laughs> oh, how pretty. Look at the colors. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, to see all this money, I can see that God really does know how to rescue his people. Hey, hey look. What? It looks like the Pharaoh changed his mind. He chased after the people of Israel with the entire Egyptian army. Oh, well, check this out. What? God sent a crazy strong wind and parted the Red Sea so Moses and the people could get across. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm all right. <laughs> Keep reading. All right. Okay, so they've left Egypt, walked through the Red Sea, and Moses is leading them back to Canaan. That's the place God promised to Abraham's family, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it. I knew God would keep all his promises like he said he would. Yeah. Uh, it looks like God's promise was coming true after all. Hmm. It looks like a pretty long journey. Hey, look here. God gave Moses some important commands. Commands? Those are rules. Uh, right. And... I know that those rules are called the Ted Commandments. Yeah. Oh, 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 hey, oh, 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 oh. God said that there be Ten Commandments and now I have them. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but why are the rules though? Well, rules usually exist to help us avoid the bad stuff that happens. Oh. You know, when people make bad choices. Uh, well, these rules are probably no different. Huh. Like the rules the professor gave us in the science lab that day. I wish we would have followed his commandments. Me too. I wouldn't be in this much trouble if we had. Exactly. Yeah, we could have avoided all this. Mm -hmm. So, what happened next? Well, the people started whining and doubting God's ability to lead them. Man, these people complained about everything. So God had them wander in the desert for 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. In the desert? Mm -hmm. That's a long time in the sand. Real long time. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Of course. Oh, oh, oh. oh. This, is, this is different. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> and turn, turn the page. Go oh, oh. oh, here, quick. Oh. 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 
Oh, oh <laughs> Lord. better, Ooh. much better. Uh, oh. Okay, um, Moses died before they even got back to Canaan. It looks like some guy named Joshua became the leader of God's people. Mm. Wow. Joshua was serious. He fought and won a lot of battles to help God's people take back the land God promised to them. Huh. Huh. Hey, hey, weird. They call Canaan a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Whoa! Oh, here. Oh. Oh. Hey. Hey. Milk! Oh. Milk and honey! <laughs> hey, what do you know? Really? A land flowing with milk and honey? Uh, well, surely not. Okay. Well, it, it looks like that just meant the land was full of good things. Uh. Now, this is wild. Joshua led God's people in a march around a walled town called Jericho, and God knocked the wall down, and they won the battle. Yeah. Huh, just like that. Oh, 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 Ah, I got it off. <laughs> you got it off. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's oh. see. This is, oh, hang on. Hey, what? This isn't good. This is not good right here. Wait, what is it? What? Man, after Joshua died, all the Israelites did their own thing again. So, it says here, God chose judges to lead and rescue his people. Yeah. Wow. There were lots and lots of judges. Oh, wait, look at this guy, Gideon. He hmm. must have been one of them. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, 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 what is this? Oh, 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 what is that? Oh, 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 clay pot. What? 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 It looks like jars or something. Oh, 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 they're breaking everywhere. Oh, 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 it's a broken pot. It's a broken pot. What is this? Dude, I have no idea. Let's see. Oh, okay, here it is. God told Gideon to have his army blow horns and uh, smash jars to beat the Midianites. You know, the bad guys, yeah, okay, right? Okay, so Gideon did. Huh. Well, it's a little weird, but it actually worked. Oh, okay, okay, my turn. Judge, uh, Judge, Judge, Deborah and Samson. Oh, oh, what is oh. What is, what is, what is, oh, 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 a dead rat, dead rat, dead rat, rat, no, 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 hey, Mike, it's, it's hair. Hair. Oh. It's hair, not a oh, dead rat. Okay, <laughs> that makes think? more sense. Hang on, let's see. Nope. Okay, it looks like after a ton of judges, the people demanded that God give Israel a king just like all the other nations. Mm -hmm. We yeah, want a king. What kind of a king big country don't have a king? If we had a king, yeah, we want to be like all the other nations. Okay, people, show some respect. <laughs> yes, that's better. Now, what's this about a king? Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, well, so the last judge, this Samuel guy, mm -hmm. reminds the Israelites that God is their king, and having a human king isn't what it's all cracked up to be. Uh, let's see, so he tries to tell them they're much better off having God as their leader instead. Makes sense. I mean, God's yeah. pretty much the best leader of all time, am I right? Still, yeah. Let's see, I wonder if they listened. Okay, no, they didn't Typical. listen. Uh, they still wanted a king. Man, what's Samuel doing? Okay, so, so God told Samuel to go ahead and find a king for Israel. Mm -hmm. It looks like he picks one, uh, some guy named Saul. Saul. And it looks like things were actually going pretty good. And, and uh, well, this Saul oh. dude likes to do things his way instead of God's way. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, oh, man, it says there says they're not following God's plan. Again. Wait, is this is this Saul? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it says here this guy's name is David. So, I, I know this guy. Yeah. I think he killed a big giant named Goliath with a rocket launcher? Mm, yeah, I know this guy too, and it wasn't a rocket launcher. It, it was a slingshot. Uh, he uh. used one rock from the slingshot to knock down Goliath. Oh, 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 not good. We're going to have to pay for that. We will. If we can ever make enough money. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, oh. Okay, so you were saying a slingshot, but rocket launcher, slingshot, tomato, tomato, I was pretty close. Yeah. I mean, as always. So what does David have to do with this story, really? Uh, well, let's find out. Mm -hmm. This is a 66 picks mixed up into one The book's about God, who he is and what he's done It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind Oh,
Testaments are set up for the big event When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement It's history, his story, whose story, God's story Oh, the story of how much he loves me Let it blow up all the pages that this show gone on Let his word explode from this video into your life <laughs> why? Oh, why did Saul sin? I can't believe I named that guy King. Samuel. Yes, God? How long will you cry for Saul? I've rejected him as king over Israel. Now stop your crying and fill your horn with oil. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of its sons to be the next king. But... But how can I go? Saul will find out and kill me. Take a cow and say that you have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse and I'll show you what to do. You are to choose the guy that I tell you to choose. Okay. Hey Jesse, I'm gonna go sacrifice to the Lord. Do you and your sons wanna come? Sure, why not? Eliab looks kingly. I bet this is the guy God has chosen to be king. Nope, he's not the one. Samuel, don't look at what the guy looks like, for I have not chosen him. Remember, the Lord, that's me, doesn't look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outer appearance, but the Lord, yours truly, looks at the heart. Sorry, Jesse. It's not Eliab. What about Abinadab? Nope. Sorry, nope. Shalma? Nope. Negative. Nope. That's not him either. Are these all the sons you have? Well, no, there's still the youngest David, but he's out in the field tending to the sheep. Eliab, go and get David. God, is this kid the guy you've chosen to be the next king? Yep, anoint him to be king. He is the one I've chosen. David, kneel down. So, let me get this straight. Saul wasn't obeying God, so God asked for him not to be king anymore, am I right? Yeah. Okay, and God told Saul to find this guy named David to be the new king. Yeah, it says here that David loved God and was the kind of king God wanted. Bonus, man. He was the kind of king the people wanted too. Nice. But I just, I don't get it still. What? I mean, why would they want David to be their king when they could have God be their king? I mean, don't get me wrong, True. David sounds like a really cool guy that loves God a lot, but it just seems like as the story keeps going, all the people just disobey God more and more. Well, kind of like the way we've been acting with Dean Sims lately. I mean, instead of kicking us out of school, you know, he chose both of us to be his assistants. We've been taking that for granted lately. <sighs> Man, you're right. Instead of goofing off and getting angry at all the stuff he's asked us to do, we should be grateful, you know? Yeah, we should. Yeah. I mean, after all the stuff he's done for us, mm -hmm. we should probably give him some respect, am I right? <laughs> the, mm, there the it goes again. Yeah. There it goes again. again. You want to give it a shot? I'll try. Ooh, <sighs> epic fail. Epic <sighs> fail. It's stuck all right. <sighs> Oh, come on. Hmm, what? Help me clean some of this stuff up. I mean, if we're ever gonna get this done, we need to, you know, start working. That's for sure. <laughs> here we go. Hmm. 
Do you ever get tired of all the stuff your parents ask you to do, like clean your room or do the dishes or babysit your little brother and sister, and you don't do it, so you end up sinning and disobeying them? That's kind of what Mike and Steve did with Dean Sims, the leader of their college. He chose Mike and Steve to be his office assistants. Still, they got lazy, they took him for granted, they even got angry at the stuff he was asking them to do. It reminds me of the people of Israel. While Moses and God's people were on their way back to Canaan, the promised land, God was their leader. But they whined. They whined to Moses and they never really understood that God was the one in charge. Even after Moses, God gave them a leader like Joshua and judges like Gideon to tell the Israelites what he wanted them to do. But still, God was the one in charge. After many judges, the people forgot all that God had done for them. They wanted to be like all the other nations. They wanted a king, so they complained. Until Samuel, the last judge, he chose a king for them. God had promised the people of Israel that he would be their leader and take care of them, but they didn't trust him. They took matters into their own hands, and they weren't the only ones. Throughout history, a lot of people have forgotten that God is the true king. He's the one that leads us, who takes care of us, who holds everything together. And here's the thing, when we forget God is the true king, we usually try to be the leader ourselves, just like the Israelites and just like Mike and Steve. They don't like Dean Sims telling them what to do, and we sometimes don't like God telling us what to do either. Instead, we want to be in charge. But we have to remember that God is our leader. He's the one in charge of our whole world and our lives. And that's good news because God loves us more, and He is wiser, and He is better than any other leader could ever be. I suppose if we knew God better, we might not forget Him so easily. We might trust Him more, but we can know Him better. We can pray and read the Bible to find out for ourselves just who He is and what He wants for our lives. In fact, the Bible says this about God in 1 Chronicles 29, 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours. O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom. Everything, including us, belongs to God, and He deserves to be treated like the King of the universe that He truly is. So here's the deal. The people of Israel chose to go their own way and ask for someone besides God to be their king. Let me tell you something. They took a giant step backwards. They're still doing the same things Adam and Eve did, and yes, the same things that we still do today. But everything, I mean everything, was under control, even if it didn't always look that way. You see, no matter what, God has a plan. He had a plan for the Israelites, and He has a plan for us, for you, and for me. We just have to trust Him and let Him be the King of our lives. So remember, the next time you're tempted to be the King of your own life instead of God, I want you to think on this. There is no higher thing than God, my king. Oh, Mike. You know, it seems like every time we come over here, things get heavier and heavier. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. You know, I was thinking, Steve. Yeah. I feel kind of bad that we didn't do exactly what Dean Sims told us to do. We forgot. I mean, he's trying to help us make up for what we did to the science building. You know, and he's in charge, and he's been really cool to us. We kind of blew it. So do you think it's too late to make things right? Uh, I don't know. Hey, so what do you think happens now since David is the king of Israel? I don't know. It seems like if they can't be happy with God, no man, not even David, can keep him on track for very long. Things are bound to go wrong. <laughs> hey, I just rhymed. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, how much do you think we're at now? Well, I think we've earned more than we had yesterday. <laughs> hey, let's call it a day, right? All right. Let's I'm go. hungry. Oh. Can we get a hamburger? If you want to, let's go. Yeah, that or maybe a good milkshake. <laughs> hey, stick with me.
One soldier.